What is up, Rab Potential YouTube channel? We're doing another informational video because I had somebody request it. It's easy enough for me to do, so I figured I'd give you some knowledge. So, adjusting the steering box on your first shin. Now, I'll start off by saying there is different steering boxes for different cars. So, for example, this right here is my 1980 SA rally car. You can see a whole bunch of stuff done to it. Yes, it's dirty. Yes, I race it and use it. Or, well, at least when there's an engine in it and stuff. Right now, I'm borrowing the race car engine for the silver car. Which, whatever. Long story. So, steering box. This doesn't actually... Um, what do I want to say? Okay, so this doesn't actually change any of the parts within the box. All you're going to be doing is adjusting the preload of the drive gear of the steering shaft onto the rest of the parts in the box. Sorry, the dog's making noise. but So, you're just adjusting the preload. So, if you imagine, I'll draw it for you on the, on the whiteboard in there in a second. If you imagine... Well, whatever. We'll just get to that in a second. Let me show you how to tighten it. Okay, so on the top of the box, there's a nut with a little flat blade screwdriver thing sticking in there. So you can see the red Sharpie mark that I made on there because that's ground zero. So you always want to mark it before you even touch it. Okay, so you're going to loosen that, the outer lock nut. Once you've got that outer lock nut loose, you fire it too. So once you have the outer lock nut loose, you're going to adjust that center flathead bolt maybe like a quarter of a turn to an eighth of a turn, then tighten the lock nut back down, and then you have to check your steering. And what I mean by check your steering, make sure that the wheel goes lock to lock without binding up. If you tighten that too tight, when you get towards one end, or the other, it'll lock up. Okay, then you'll have to loosen this and kind of start over. So, small turns. All you want to do, small turns. You don't want to do anything big, just do small stuff. So, at least on the 1980, it's super easy to adjust. The other thing you need to note, and I apologize if the lighting's terrible and you can't see my face, is that when you tighten the lock nut down, it is going to tighten the center set screw a little bit. So, Realize that when you lock down that center screw, it is going to adjust the center, maybe like an eighth of an inch. And no matter how hard you try to hold on to it with a flat blade, you're probably not going to be able to hold it centered. So, we're going to go down to the shop, and I'm going to show you on the whiteboard what I mean, and I'll show you how to do it on the, the race car as well, the other race car. Alright, so, we're in the shop, and let me show you what I mean by adjusting it too tight. Okay, so I'm going to explain it more of like a rack and pinion style versus this, but it works the same way. So your steering shaft is here, and it's got a gear on it. Okay, it goes all the way around. Now imagine this is going to be a gear unrolled, but imagine you have a gear right here that rides on that. So when you spin this, it's going to roll along that gear, i.e. we'll say these are your turning, your tie rods, and it's going to slide this box right here, the teeth, it's going to slide this back and forth. That's how like a rack and pinion works. So steering box work, a steering bo box works very similar, but it's more like a ring and pinion gear instead of one of these. So basically what you're doing with that nut is you're applying more pressure downward right here. Now why is that important? So if you can imagine, majority of the time spent driving a car is in a straight line. So the steering box is going to see a lot of vibration, wear and tear, where these interact the most. So if you imagine driving in a straight line, it's going to wear the teeth out right through here. Okay? So, you're going to put more pressure downward on that so that you get a tighter engagement of the teeth. So that's why when you're driving in a straight line, your car seems like it wanders. Okay? Like left to right. you got a little play in the center. And you've probably replaced your, your tie rod ends and your um, your like pitman arm and your idler arm and stuff and all that stuff which is just you know easy peasy stuff tie rod ends here and here idler arm over there pitman arms the one that comes off the bottom those all have little ball joints and they'll get wore out eventually too so back to adjusting your steering and why it's so important to go in small increments if you over tighten this 
okay and then you turn it and this slides over and you get to these teeth that haven't been used very much right this will get stuck in there and you'll have too much pressure and that gear will get stuck then your wheel stuck then you have to release the pressure to get it back off so that's why I say go small amounts always mark where you started because you want to be able to know okay I'm only gonna go an eighth of a turn check how tight it is and you can literally check how tight the steering is but if you sit here hold the wheel and it's gonna be hard for you to see but I'm gonna wiggle the wheel back and forth you can see that moving right so basically that's moving with minimal play in the wheel, which you can't really see both of them without a tire on it, but you'll be able to feel it. So if you just crack your window, get your car up in the air, piddle with the adjustment, and you're going to be able to see, if you go real slow, the play in the wheel, okay? Obviously, this one's got a quick release, so the quick release has a little play. So you got to make sure you hold the wheel tight in that place so that you're just seeing what's in the box. Now, it gets a little tougher on the newer cars, so this is an 84. And if you saw the other car out there, it has just a small 14 millimeter nut and that adjustment screw. This one has a big lock screw, then it has the adjustment screw in the middle. So, I was adjusting this, I busted this lock nut loose, okay, which I can do. You got to get you a big old adjustable wrench if you have a garage and you don't have one of these. You're slacking. Let me pop this off real quick without messing it up. Might need both my hands. Need another hand here. Oh, come on, just tighten this. Okay, there we go. So, we got that loose now. Now, on this car, I just checked it. I took my 14. I got it marked. My line right here. I took my 14 and I adjusted this bit tighter right here. Left and loose. Now I know we're left and loose. Now I know it's spinning the whole thing, but the key thing is this. This spins freely. Um, so you tighten this down and it adjusted it tighter. You tight loosen this and it made it looser. So I was unable to separate the center screw from this outside bit. However, it looks like that whole thing is threaded and that should adjust it. So, the key thing though, like I said, always mark it, where's my mark, a little bit tighter, and then tighten this baby back down, always mark it. Now, we're also gonna go and look at two other cars just to see how the steering boxes look, okay? So, remember, you're only adjusting preload. You can do this as much as you want, but if you got washed out ball joints, or washed out, um, tie rod ends and pitman arms and all that stuff, it ain't gonna help you, okay? And the sad thing is, is that there's no company making replacement steering boxes for these cars. So, luckily, we have just about every year our RX-7 here. So, we're gonna start with the 79. You can see it. Okay, so here we go. 1979 has the same steering box as a 1980. The next one, which you saw in 84, 85. So, the next one we're going to look at, which is kind of sad because I only got three of them here that are like this. This is 84, 85 with power steering. So you can see right there, you have one big nut, no lock nut, just one big nut, the regular lock nut, kind of like a 79, with the adjustment screw in the center. This is a power steering car. You can see right there's the addition for the power steering stuff. Okay, now I checked this one right here, which is also a power steering car, and it is the same. Oh, come on, get aimed right. And that one is the same as that other 84. So, unfortunately, I do have four 84 GS LSEs here, and out of all of those, only one of them doesn't have power steering. So, now we're gonna check even some more high-class rotary stuff. This is probably a car that a majority of you watching this have never heard of. Maybe you have. So this is a 76 RX-5 Cosmo. Now, this is my car. She's minty. Let's look how its steering box works. So, pretty much the same. You've got the adjustment screw and a little set screw in the center. 
or the adjustment screw, and then you have the uh, um, the lock screw on the outside. Now, let's go check another one because we got another variation here. Now, this is something funny. I didn't learn this adjustment on RX-7s. I come from Jeeps and off-road stuff, and I had to adjust my Jeep steering box really bad. It was just like terrible. I mean, all over the road. So that's where I adjusted it first. So let's look at the rotary truck. Let's see, how's the rotary truck look? I think I remember what it looks like. So, rotary truck, buried way down in here, same thing. Little nut with a set screw in the middle. And remember, this is not, shoot, I get my hat all dirty. And remember, you are not replacing any parts or changing any of the condition of your parts when you make this adjustment. You are you are literally adjusting the preload in the box, okay? So you might only be able to get it so good because the center might be so wore out that, you know, an extra eighth of a turn and you're already binding it up on the ends. So that's why I always say 100% start small, okay? So this one, same thing, which I think... It looks to me, oh yeah, 100%. So this nut right here, this big nut, should come loose from the part that's got the holes in it. And then you should be able to adjust it the same way. Let me try to pop that apart real quick just so I can confirm to you that that's how this one works and it's not any different from the other cars, okay? But as far as how I explained it on that 79 and all the rest of them, it's the exact same. I will confirm this for you, give me a second. All right, so I'm gonna cut this back in or I can, but I checked this, okay? This is exactly the same as the other one. This big lock nut thing, looks like it's how you get it apart. So, leave the big lock nut tight, okay? The big giant one, you don't have to pop that loose. What you need to do is break this nut loose right here. So you're gonna see this is gonna spin independently of everything else. Break that nut loose. Once you got that nut broken loose, I'm just gonna set my wrench in here so I can film this and do it. You're going to adjust your center set screw. So you're going to see this is going separately. Well, not stuck together because my wrench fell off. You're going to adjust your center set screw. Okay, so like I said here, I'll loosen this up pretty good. There you go. It's pretty loose. And uh, you're not going to be able to see it. You can kind of hear the play in it now. And then I'll just adjust this back tight and put it back together. So, can confirm. Don't mess with the big nut. If it does come loose while you're trying to get it off, draw the line on everything. Like line it all up. Draw a big nice sharpie line on there before you touch it. Because you want to be able to put it back exactly where it was should you get all sorts of stuff out of whack. Okay? So, with that, last thing I'm going to leave you with, make sure after you adjust it, raise the car up in the air, after you or raise the car up in the air, adjust it, and after you make an adjustment, make sure to cycle the wheel all the way to one side and all the way back because you don't want it to get stuck. If you don't do that and you're out driving around, it's going to get stuck and you're probably not going to have tools to unstuck it, and then you're going to have to call your buddy with a non rotary vehicle to come get you, and he's going to make fun of you because your rotary car broke, even though your engine probably still runs better than his. So, with that. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.